In this section, we'll talk about a different approach of handling data in a Redux app. This is an experiment. I do not advise using this in production. My intention here is to show you how Dataless Redux works and point towards production-ready solutions that implement this pattern. Today, we'll see how to render our application using a cache layer for our data. The main idea is to save only loading states and application state inside Redux. The data itself will be read from an in-memory cache. This will remove most of our Redux code and should simplify the way we think about state. The basic concepts of this idea is to remove the data from the reducers, avoid writing data Redux boilerplate, and save inside the Redux only the application state. Let's go straight to the code. The first thing we need to do is update our reducers and tests. I removed the data key from our reducers and all actions that were exclusively there for updating the data property are also gone. It's impressive all the amount of code we write to maintain our data, so it feels so good to get rid of it. As you might have noticed, I'm leaving the loading state untouched. This is because this is in fact a state of our application and not data, so it's helpful to maintain it there. But more importantly, without it, Redux won't know that something has changed and our app won't render the new data. The next thing is to build our cache service. If you find a library that covers your use cases, please go ahead and use it. This implementation is more than enough for our experiment, but maybe there's a more robust implementation out there. Okay, so let's go through it real quick. Our cache will be divided by namespaces, where each namespace will be a JavaScript map object. I created wrappers on top of the most basic map methods, such as set, get, keys, and values. These wrappers receive a namespace to select the appropriate map object, and for convenience, I extended the behavior of set and get so that you can pass arrays or individual objects too. I also added two new methods, save and load. These are helpful for serializing and deserializing the cache. Finally, we export a singleton instance of the cache that will be used on our application. The next step is to save the data in our cache. To do this, I updated our API service. Now, when a request succeeds, instead of returning the data and dispatching an action, we'll save it directly into our cache. Once we have our data inside the cache, we need a, a way to render it. For this, we'll need to update our selectors. Let's check the getActiveMemberIDs. Before, we were taking the data from our store and filtering it on the selector. Now, we need to update the selector so that it reads the data from the cache instead. Another thing we'll need to pass is the loading state into our selector. This will help us break the memoization reselect does and display the new data. Once we've done that, we'll be able to render our application. As a last step, we need to be able to share our cache data between server and browser. The naive approach is to serialize our cache and render it as a global variable. Then, on the client side, we can deserialize the data and initialize our cache with it. And that's it. As you can see, the application works just fine. It's loading and updating the state as we go. All features are working perfectly.